this month, the United States followed through with its promise to withdraw from the Human Rights Council. Citing the need for reform on the council, Ambassador Nikki Haley made the potential move known about a year ago. But what impact will this withdrawal have? We get differing opinions from Professor Vincent Ferraro of Mount Holyoke College and Gary Lafort of American International College. Well, my initial reaction was, you know, a little disappointed because if you want to change an organization, you know, the best way to do it is from within. But at the same time, I understand where the U.S. is, is coming from. Uh, the uh, Trump administration really believes uh, that the, uh, the council is uh, politically biased, especially towards uh, uh, Israel. Uh, a number of its members are countries that have a history of, uh, of human rights um, violations. And so, in all good faith, you know, it's hard to be part of an organization where you really don't believe that they're living up to their missions and goals. And I think what is really important is that uh, it really didn't start with the, the Trump administration. It really goes back to the uh, Bush administration in 2006. Uh, when the council was originally uh, created. Uh, because at that Bush. point, Kofi Annan had dissolved the previous That's Human right. Rights Commission. That's right. Which had been started in 1947. Eleanor Roosevelt chaired that one. But to, to bring in Professor Ferraro, you know, we heard Nikki Haley. I hear your point about the Bush mm -hmm. administration, but we heard um, Nikki Haley, the head of the, the, the ambassador to the UN, say about a year ago, telegraph that if a few changes weren't made, the U.S. would remove itself from the council. Do you think the U.S. should have done that? Absolutely not. And why is that? Well, I mean, if you fight and lose, that's one thing. But if you don't fight, then you're definitely going to lose. And, and how would you like to have seen uh, the U.S. put up more of a, a fight, to use I your words? The, the human, human rights are under assault all over the world. The United States is one of the most important voices in favor of human rights, and for the United States to excuse itself means that uh, essentially it doesn't think that the issue is important. But when, you know, uh, Commissioner, excuse me, when Ambassador Haley said, that she felt, to, to your point, Professor LaFort, that there are abuses, there are people on the council who have been appointed to the council representing countries where human rights may be being trampled. She's concerned that the U.S. being connected to the organization uh, aligns the U.S. with that perspective. Is that not the way either of you sees it? I mean, that's how I see it. That's why I say I understand the U.S. You know, US position. You know, when you have a council that between 2006 and 2016 had 135 resolutions, and uh, I think 60, uh, 68 of those resolutions were uh, directed towards Israel. That seems kind of unfair. When you have member countries uh, that are considered non-free, that have a history of, uh, of human rights violations like uh, China and uh, Venezuela, um, uh, Saudi Arabia, for example, and then that just you know reinforces uh, the position uh, that the United States has taken. We don't want to be in the console configured this way. There is a need for reform. For Professor Ferraro, how do you think that the U.S. maybe could have stayed involved but worked actively within the organization to try and bring about some of the changes that, that maybe would, would have been more in line with what the Trump administration was trying to get at? Well, first of all, the United States should clean up its own act. I mean, we could talk about other countries not adhering to human rights, but waterboarding is against the Geneva Convention, and the United States did that. Uh, in 1994, the United States signed the Convention on the Rights of Children, which specifically prohibits the forcible separation from children from their parents. So it's very difficult to find any nation in the world today that adheres strictly to human rights. On the issue of Israel, um, uh, it may be a case of bias. I'm certainly not going to discount that. But one can't forget that the United Nations was central in the formation of Israel. And it created, in 1947, three entities, a Jewish zone, an Arab zone, and an internationalized city of Jerusalem. It, the situation in the Middle East is something that the, the UN created. Therefore, it has a special responsibility. Since 1947, the Arab zone has been um, made much smaller than it was in 1947, and Jerusalem is no longer an internationalized city. And therefore, the United Nations is right to call into question what's happening in the Middle East. And I would, uh, you know, and I wouldn't question that. I mean, certainly the United Nations has uh, that, that right, but it has to be a balanced right. 
it can't be an over focus, you know, especially in the human rights area on just one country when you have other countries around the world committing atrocities uh, far worse than we see in uh, uh, that's happening as far as the, uh, the uh, Israeli-Palestinian uh, <coughs> conflict goes, like Saudi Arabia, for example, uh, the human rights violations that we see in North Korea or um, of the situation in Venezuela or China, uh, for, for that matter. Well, you mentioned North Korea a moment ago, and we saw President Trump meet with Kim Jong-un not very long ago. Human rights didn't come up during that conversation. So, and we heard that Secretary uh, Mike Pompeo, when he came out uh, and talked about this, he said that the Human Rights Council uh, was an exercise in, quote, shameless hypocrisy. And he went on to really talk about how he felt like the council was being silent in these areas. So you have the Trump administration being silent on one hand, not bringing up human rights violations in North Korea, but then Mike Pompeo came coming out and saying something different. So how do you jibe those two different points of view. But, but we don't know for sure what was or was not discussed as far as the meeting with uh, our Premier Kim and, uh, and President, uh, President Trump. The main focus was denuclearization. And you have to be so very, very careful in muddying, you know, the issues with other issues that are equally important, uh, but the, the main focus at the meeting was really uh, denuclearization. I'd be very surprised that it wasn't at least touched based on but it certainly wasn't the focus, and the international community felt that it should have been one of the principal focuses. And uh, I just think that that was the, uh, the wrong forum, you know, uh, get a clear commitment to denuclearize and then on follow-on uh, meetings uh, and negotiations you can address issues like the human rights violations. Professor Farrar, to the point about uh, Secretary Pompeo saying that it was a shameless hypocrisy, what, what's happening at the council, what do you think about uh, that perspective? Well, I mean, look at the U.S. allies. I mean, Professor LaFord has mentioned the human rights abuses of Saudi Arabia, a strong U.S. ally. Look at the relationship of Trump to Putin, uh, a human rights violator. Look at uh, Trump's relationship to President Xi in China. Um, the, 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 the truth is that there's rampant hypocrisy on the issue of human rights, uh, and that's unfortunate. And the United States, to be true to its values and to its constitution, should be the foremost proponent of human rights in the world. And I wish that the United States would return to its values and its roots and articulate that position very strongly. We have about a minute left, and I will put one question to each of you. Secretary Haley, or excuse me, Ambassador Haley, said that the United States may come back and become a member of the council if a few changes are made. Do you think that that will happen? Do you think the United States will eventually come back to this Human Rights Council? I think that's an important point. Matter of fact, that's one of the points that I wanted to bring up uh, if the opportunity presented itself. Uh, the United States isn't saying that it is not concerned with the international human rights. It is saying that it is concerned with the way that it's handled in the council. Uh, Ambassador Haley did say that, geez, yes, we're not a member now, but if some of the proposals uh, that we have recommended to improve the council are implemented, that then they would reconsider their position and, uh, and rejoin. One of the uh, uh, ad uh, agenda items is the fact that uh, Israel has always been brought up in every single session that the Council has going all the way back to 2006, something that has never been done to any other country. So one of the conditions would be that uh, uh, Israel be taken off as uh, one of the agenda items at every session. Professor Ferraro, I want to give you a chance to respond. Uh, I think as long as President Trump is in office, the United States will not return to the Council. Human rights is not a priority for him. He doesn't really care. I appreciate you both taking some time today and sharing your perspectives. Thanks so much. <laughs>